Emerge and Active, we've been on an incredibly interesting journey. I've been in this business now for four years, and when I first came here, I was incredibly excited. I, I didn't work for Virgin before I came to South Africa, Virgin Active. I worked for a competitor in the UK. So I was so excited to come and find out about the Virgin brand. You know, what's this all about? How do they manage to put Virgin across so many diverse businesses and still be very successful? So I was one of the most um, excitable people when I arrived on the shores of South Africa, going, I've like, got the party balloons and the banners, and I'm ready to come and join this organization and learn all about it. I've been raised on Richard Branson. You know, I had the credit card in my back pocket. I've got the books at home. Um, <clears throat> been a child of the 80s. Uh, Richard Branson was huge in the UK. You know, there was never a news story other than Richard Branson, you know, big fingers up at the big boys of BA and all that kind of stuff. It was an amazing, amazing journey. So when I arrived here, I, um, I kind of got to this business and I, I got, in, got in my chair at the desk and was waiting for this kind of virgin party to, to evolve and it kind of never did. And I was like, okay, well, what, what, where, where's all the virginness? So I went out and I chatted to a few people and I said, I heard this is like a virgin business. Where's all the virginness? Shh, we don't talk about that here. We were health and racket. We were health and racket for, for almost a decade and a half. And when we, were, when we went through liquidation, we were acquired by Virgin. And they acquired over 100 clubs. And they acquired over 3,500 people. And then what happens, they went through a rebrand exercise. So they took all of those people and they dressed me in virgin uniform. And they took all the clubs and they took down the health and racket signs and they put up virgin active signs. So superficially on top, it looked like a virgin business. But once you scratched below the surface, it wasn't virgin at all. In fact, I would actually say it was the polar opposite to what virgin is. I can't begin to tell you how difficult it was to go to a board and say to them, OK, this is a pretty cool business. But do you know what it could be? If you gave it permission to be virgin, this could be amazing. And we had to convince them to do some pretty scary stuff to allow us to take this good business to what we believed would be great. So. This is what we had to do. Who thinks culture matters? Does culture matter? Has culture got anything to do with people? <laughs> is it not just about brand? Is it not just about having a good image? I mean, what is culture? When you say to people, oh, we're doing a culture strategy, which is one of the most unbelievable, unbelievable mm. oxymorons in the whole of the world because they're two opposite things. But culture is everything. It's not something, it is everything. People will come to you for what your culture stands for. Your culture is your businesses, your company's DNA, it's its personality. <clears throat> and what we quickly realized is the culture that was the hangover, we call it the dragon in the system, is the slang for it we use in our business today. But the dragon in our system was the health and racket culture. Because the health and racket culture was one of fear, it was one of a lot of hierarchy. It was one where nobody dare take a risk. Now, when you think about what the virgin culture was or is today, it's the complete opposite of that. It is entrepreneurship. It is taking a chance. It's challenging the norm. It's doing the fun stuff and being not so um, serious about ourselves. So <clears throat> we looked at our culture and said, how do we change that? Because that's the thing that's stopping us from being successful. So we had to start with, <clears throat> okay, what are we all about? Now, this for us is everything. If you come to our business, you talk to any of our people, this is what they will tell you. We want to be loved by our people, because if we're loved by our people, we'll be loved by our members. And if we're loved by our members, we'll be loved by our shareholders. That's exactly what Richard Branson said himself. You see, if you get the people right, if the people are happy, they're going to create happy customers, and customers are happy, they'll come back, and that in turn creates a happy business, a happy shareholder. But you need a lofty goal. You need to have something that you can rally your people behind. Because when you go on a, on a 
embark on this journey of changing culture, I promise you it's one of the most difficult things your business will do. But you need, some, you need a war cry. You need something that everyone can get behind. And it can't be long and blooming complicated. It has to be said in a sentence. It can't come out in a book like this from the brand team. Sorry, brand team. It has to be something which is so simplistic that everyone gets it. And that's what we chose. We chose to become the world's most loved. Now, the reason that we chose that and not the world's best or the world's greatest health club chain is because we felt that that's something that could be measured by our people and by our members, not by us. It's not for us to decide whether we are the greatest in the world. It's our people and our members. What I'm going to do for the rest of my time here is I'm going to explain to you the people side of our strategy. This is equally measured by a customer strategy that we put into place because the two for us are completely intertwined. You cannot separate out your customer service strategy from your people strategy because guess what? Your people are the ones that deliver your customer service strategy. So the two had to go hand in hand. And I worked incredibly closely with our people director. We, we pretty much moved into the same office. And we spent all the time on the road together. We spent all the time in launches. In fact, on this very stage, we launched this whole concept to our management team. So we had <clears throat> great people and great service. This is all under the banner of I do. And guess what? It's a love story. So that's what Virgin do. Because of the world's most loved, we decided to go with this love theme. And we, everything that we did within that strategy was really en encased upon relationship and about love. Because that's what you should. You should love to go to work. You should love to, love to go to your, your local health club. You should love to be a part of this family. Family is about love. <clears throat> you also need to understand that you're in a relationship with your people. You've got lots of... We call them humans now. <laughs> we don't even call them staff or employees. We call, we've got lots of humans because we have to remember they're humans and they have their human needs. So of all our humans, we're in a relationship with every single one of them. And that relationship means that like the birds of paradise right at the beginning, there's a lot of flirting that goes on. And the flirting is about recruiting. So we don't call it recruiting anymore. We call it flirting. Like it. <clears throat> so when we go out and we flirt... It's all about putting your best foot forward. It's all about catching their eye and you know, being the razzmatazz. And then you've come to making a bunch of promises. And I think about a relationship with somebody. Many people don't get beyond the first date. <laughs> well, you've got to ask yourself, if your people are choosing not to, not to come and work for you, what part of your flirting is not working for you? And then you think about, okay, well, then we fall in love. Okay, I'm, I'm enjoying this. It's all the excitement. It's the first, we call it the first 90 days of somebody working for us or being a member is our falling in love phase. And if you go to our, our business and talk to any of our people and say, what does falling in love mean to you? They'll go, the first 90 days of being here. Because we, they need something different. It's about giving them what they need when they need it. And that first 90 days, they, need, they don't need a lot of motivation. I promise you, these people are the most excited in the world. But they do need some basics. Being in love. We call the being in love phase anything beyond the 90 days to the end of the year. Okay, so it's getting a little bit more comfortable. I want to make sure that this is meaningful. I'm still relatively excited, but I'm not quite as excited as I was in the beginning. I'm looking for more stuff. I'm looking for substance. I'm looking to see whether this is somewhere I'm going to stay for the long term. And then we have staying in love. And staying in love is anything beyond 12 months. For our members, it means they're out of contract. So are we now taking these people for granted? Are we still investing you as an individual? Are we still giving you things to get excited about? Are we still giving you cool stuff like we gave you at the beginning? Are we still taking you to the hot restaurants that we took you on the first date? Or have we just become a bit mundane? See, we can all re relate to this kind of relationship. And I'm sure many of you are sitting there laughing in your heads about <laughs> some of the things that happen in your own lives. But it's a relationship. The ultimate place for us is a place called Happily Ever Active. And this is a place that we've created for our members and for our people. Happily Ever Active is a place where people who have been with us for more than one year and are scoring us a 9 or a 10 promoter score. That goes for our staff and our people. And that Happily Ever Active is this beautiful world where things just happen to you. For our members, I don't want to give too much away because I know we've got someone in the room. 
but <clears throat> for our members, it's random, spontaneous acts of love. So we'll just happen to do upgrades. We just happen to send gifts. We just happen to know things about you. And this is a world that's quite new to us at the moment, but we are creating. And we actually mon monitor our management in how many of their, their, their humans, as well as their members, they are moving into the happily ever active place. Our brand values are the absolute fundamental of everything that we are. They are written in six meter letters all around the office. They are talked about a lot. We train on them a lot. And we absolutely hold our people to account that they are alive and kicking in every aspect of our company. The temptation at the beginning of delivering the strategy was to actually go, OK, let's do all the cool stuff. We've got brand license because we're Virgin. So we can get away with most things. So let's do all the cool stuff. And it wasn't until we actually we, we went on a road show. We went and spent some time with our people. And literally, we sat in rooms like this with stools at the front, with microphones. And we let the people ask us anything that they wanted to ask us. And I promise you, it was an absolute experience. Because we didn't give our people medical aid. <clears throat> Virgin had never invested in that sum, mainly because of the cost. It was an incredibly expensive thing to do. I'll tell you in pounds how much it was, three and a half million pounds for us to install medical aid. But if they don't feel safe, if they don't feel that they can come to work in the morning and actually be able to get there and not be sick, and if they are sick, they can't go to the doctor, going to miss a whole day of work, then there was just no way that we could make them feel safe. So we think about, you know, do I feel safe? Do we, have we been very um, straightforward with them? Do we explain to them what is expected within their role? Do we make sure that on day one of starting that you've got the things that you need to do a good job? Do we actually share that with them? Do we make them feel that like they belong? Do you know who your coworkers are? Have you been introduced to everybody? Yeah, does everyone know it? at our head office we have these hearts that hang over all of our desks with our names on it? Because there's nothing worse than going into a big head office and not knowing who's who. And even when you work in the office and you don't know who's who. So you walk into our, our offices, you'll just see these big hearts and that's just to, to get rid of the the, the not knowing, to make sure that people feel that they belong. We put in things like the vibometer. Every day, you can, when they go onto the internet, they just do have a little sliding scale and they click how they feel. And that comes straight up to me. So I have a vibometer in my office, which constantly displays how the business is feeling. If I wanted to break that down into clubs or into functions or into regions, then I can do that. But it's a constant gauge. And they just go sliding scale, 0 to 100%, how are you feeling? And they slide that thing up and down. And it's an awesome just dip in tool of, is the business feeling good today? If you put a policy out tomorrow, how does it feel the next day? Is it feeling the impacts of that? Because how my people feel has a massive impact into how my members feel. And we threw out the rule book. You talk about um, health and racket. I promise you, I've never seen so flipping rules, many rules in the whole of my life. They had rule book upon rule book. But we had a whole web base of operational standards. So we only live by one rule now, which is the golden rule, which is that. We just treat others as we expect to be treated. And that's the, that's the gauge for internal and external. Activist <clears throat> is what we name our people now. We want to create an army of activists. Because activists create super promoters, as do terrorists create super detractors in our business. So the more activists we have, the better we have with our customers. So unleashing our army of activists is what it's all about. And we are very focused on our people. In fact, 80% of my role is people. I don't work in the people departments. I don't, I'm not the uh, HR director by far. But it, my job is to do that. Because if we have this flywheel, this is how I grow this business. That's my responsibility is to grow it. If we make happy people, they make happy members. If we have happy members, that creates growth. That's why we've just opened our 97th club at the weekend. We're now a big business. We've got 4,500 employees, over 100 clubs just here in SA. Now we access 120,000 people a day. These are just the outcomes of putting an amazing culture in of a company who cares for its people first then to its members and finally to its shareholders. Thank you very much.